The latest Pine Grove comes with Tailwind CSS 4 integration. That's like the new, the latest version of Tailwind that has some changes compared to Tailwind 3. And let me show you how you can use it in Pine Grove. So for new projects, if you click on new project and then go to Tailwind CSS section, here we now have version 4 template and it's just a simple blank page that then you can use to build up your Tailwind 4 project. And Pine Grove tries to automatically detect the correct version of Tailwind and if you select an element, go to Properties panel you can see the Tailwind version there at any time. And of course, you can also change it with this selector. But uh, according to our test, this works quite well. So usually auto automatic detection does the job very well. So for, to show you the rest of what's new, I'll just uh, close this and open an existing Tailwind 4 project. And I won't go into details of what are the differences between Tailwind 3 and 4, that's like beyond the scope. But what I want to show you is, you know, what's new with Tailwind 4 in Pine Grove. And one of the kind of the most important improvements in, in Tailwind 4 is that we have like when it comes to values such as padding, spacing, width and height and so on. Basically we can use arbitrary values, not only predefined uh, spacers. And this is also reflected um, in Pine Grove controls. Like Tailwind 4 controls have a lot more options to choose from compared to previous version. And another big change is uh, how colors are handled and color opacity. Um, before Tailwind had like two separate classes, one for color and one for opacity, but now uh, only this like kind of combo notation is used, like the color class slash the opacity. So there is no longer a separate um, class for opacity. And this was supported in Tailwind 3, but in Tailwind 4 it, it became the only way to set up opacity on various colors. So Pine Grove supports this, of course. And um, then one other improvement um, is the kind of the pseudo class or variant state selector. Because now here we also have containers and like the selectors are organized in submenus. So like ARIA has um, submenu, so it, it's less crowded. And then like if you have like data with brackets and three dots, then when this selector is chosen, we actually have to fill in the value, um, you know, for the dots because the selector actually expects a value there. So this is a nice helper. And what else is here? Yeah. And some uh, states kind of work with other states. And in that case, again, like group variant, we show a submenu where we can then select the kind of the, the second part of the selector without typing it in. So this is very, very handy and it's a new, not with Tailwind 4, but like in Pine Grove integration of Tailwind. But this approach at the moment only works with Tailwind 4. Okay, and going on, 
design panel is also fully supported. Like the internal compiler comes with uh, version 4 as well. And we have now more colors here. Basically, all Tailwind colors are exposed in the design panel. And this is all the same. But then when we get into compiler and custom configuration options, so first of all, here we have the compiler version. And again, PineGrowth tries to automatically detect the correct one. And then custom configuration in Tailwind 4, like the way how to do it changed. And in Tailwind 4, custom configuration is done using CSS variables. So there is no longer a separate config file. Although for like le legacy reasons, I think Tailwind 4 can support it. Um, but the new approach is to use variables to customize our configuration. So here we have add config settings. So let's try maybe, I don't know, screen sizes. So yeah, now we have, this is the, the correct notation. So we, and PineGrow helps us to, to come up with the correct syntax. So here we have like the team and then Inside the team declaration, we use CSS variables to customize Tailwind. And you now please refer to Tailwind documentation to see the detailed instruction for how this is done. And then we can also set up the dark mode. So now it's down here. So this uh, makes dark mode kind of you work with the special dark class. So if the document has a dark class, then dark mode will be activated. So this is a nice helper um, that helps us do that. And um, yeah, we can also like, because this, this is being added to the, um, to the CSS file that is compiled into, with Tailwind. So here we could add other things. So we are not limited just to the team section. We can also add configuration or even custom CSS rules or components outside, um, you know, outside the team area. So it's much more versatile and flexible. And the disabled pre-flight also works uh, with Tailwind 4 as well. Yes, so what else? Um, again, external build process is supported. In PineGrow, there are two options how to use it. One is using the design panel or the other one is uh, just using it without the design panel. And yeah, now because we're using design panel, we automatically get this. So if we switch into external build process, then we can choose the source CSS file. And um, because at the moment I my project doesn't have external Tailwind and therefore PineGrow cannot detect the version and that's why we see also the option to set up the config file. But, um, you know, let me close this project. And open my external test. There's not much going on. And if I go into settings, See, we have here only the source CSS file is used and set. There is no need to set up the config. Um, but that means if you are using external Tailwind 4 build process, using the legacy option to still include the config file, like the old fashioned config file, uh, that is not supported at the moment by PineGrow. And, uh, you know, if you're thinking whether it makes sense to upgrade your projects from Tailwind 3 to Tailwind 4, 
my opinion is that for existing projects there is no need. You now just keep using Tailwind 3, it's very powerful, very capable, and then use Tailwind 4 for new projects. Um, because, okay, there is, when using external compiler, Tailwind 4 is faster, but in, in my view, like the benefits are not really that, you know, huge, that they would justify migrating the whole Tailwind 3 projects into Tailwind 4. Um, unless you try to use uh, the official upgrade tool provided by the Tailwind team, and if that works perfectly out of the box, then okay, why not? But uh, I haven't tried that, so I'm not sure. Um, yeah, okay, and everything else when it comes to Tailwind is same as before. Um, the class tree inspector is also here, and for complex styling, I really recommend you to use it. And then with uh, AI Assistant, we, we have a kind of strange situation because like all the, uh, the best, the latest models, they're trained on Tailwind 3 projects. So they don't really know about Tailwind 4. And, but with PineGrow AI Assistant, that is covered because when Tailwind 4 is used, then we inject a, a kind of very short addition into the prompt that explains the main differences between Tailwind 3 and Tailwind 4. And then advanced model models like Claude, Sonnet and, and, and others are able to use this instruction to work correctly with Tailwind 4 projects. So while we are talking, let me just show you a few improvements that we did to the AI assistant. So let me close the project and open. So this is Tailwind 4 project. It was, just, um, it was uh, generated by Mr. Pinecon with our AI assistant. It's very cool. So there are like two additions. We refactured the UI before the, the action was here on the top, like the action in turn, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to transform the selected element? Do you want to edit the code? Do you want to edit the styling or the whole project? So this is now here next to the new task button because new task will run new task according to what action is selected. So it makes more sense to group these two buttons together, you know, because once we do something, you know, let's just say improve the design. So this is a transform task was started and, um, and the assistant is now working on it. So what happened? Okay, so we got like a nice uh, hero section. And now we have the follow-up option. And when we do follow-up, follow-up always just, you know, modifies the existing task, the existing action. And then before, because the action was here on top, if you change the action before doing follow-up, it was kind of, you know, you could expect that the action will also be changed during the follow-up command. But that that's not how it works. So that's why, you know, the action is down here next to new task button. So if I want to change the action and let's work with multiple files, then it's kind of more clear that this is something that will, you know, take effect when I do a new task, not when I do follow up. So we added a couple of new models, um, most notably, notably, Anthropics Claude Sonnet 3.7 um, for according to our testing for like web development tasks where you also want to create visually appealing results, it's still the best model there is. 
much better than anything from OpenAI or DeepSeek or the reasoning models. Um, because Claude not just understand complex things, but also creates visually appealing and visually rich creative results. And that's something, you know, when, when we're doing web design, web development, that's really a, a crucial point. So yeah, that's, uh, and of course we fixed a bunch of bugs for this release. Um, so hopefully everything will run more smoothly with the help of this PineGrow update. And the same features will also be shortly available in PineGrow Online and in PineGrow plugin for WordPress. So yeah, have fun with web development and all the best. Bye bye.